Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to briefly analyze Paul Pogba's tactical impact and France's 2-2 draw against Portugal. So when we break down the game and we do look at the board, we have Portugal in a 4-3-3 and France in a 4-2-3-1. So first, we're going to break down how both sides look to contain each other and then focus on how Paul Pogba was able to get himself in positions to impact the game. When you look at France, you see them in the 4-2-3-1, but they often do drop off into two banks of four. They have Benzema and Griezmann looking to sit in between Danilo, and Mbappe and Tolisso were supposed to drop off into a narrow wider areas to close down Semedo and Rafael Guerrero. If they look to press from the front, one would step to the ball carrying center back, let's say it's Pep, it would be Benzema stepping into his path, and Griezmann sitting on Danilo and vice versa. If Griezmann pushed to Ruben Diaz, Benzema would drop back and close down Danilo. As you could see, in that 4-2-3-1, it is 3v3 in that midfield zone. Griezmann or Benzema were tasked with sticking on Danilo, Conte would step into the path of Moutinho, and Pogba would push into the path of Renato Sanchez. You do have Tolisso playing in a right-sided attacking midfield zone, and he is a central midfielder. So there were times where he was tucking in narrow to ensure that France had enough cover in those central areas, and also due to the fact that Ronaldo was dropping off deeper to check into the ball. If Ronaldo checks into the ball, you could have Tolisso stepping into his path, and then Pogba could hold his position with Renato Sanchez. Portugal did look to overcome that by having Renato Sanchez dropping off into an inside left position to get on the ball, and if Pogba didn't step into his path, there were times we would see Tolisso pushing forward to close him down. That does create a 2v1 with Rafael Guerrero being able to push forward. And there were times where you would see Tolisso dropping off to recover his position on Rafael Guerrero. And if he didn't drop back to cover his man, you could have Pogba shifting across. Even if that wasn't the case, if Rafael Guerrero was pushing forward and Pogba held the center of the pitch, for instance due to Ronaldo dropping off deeper, then if the ball was shifted out into the path of Rafael Guerrero, you'd see Koundé stepping into his path and Varane shifting across to close down Jota. Here you can see Rafael Guerrero looking to play the ball into Renato Sanchez dropping off deeper, but look at the French pressure. You have Pogba stepping in towards him, Griezmann within close proximity but blocking off the passing lane into Danilo with Benzema looking to step in, and Conte also looking to push forward if Danilo somehow gets the ball. Here we can see another example of France's press with Tolisso shifting into the path of Rafael Guerrero, Griezmann ahead of Ruben Diaz, Pogba pushing out to Renato Sanchez, Conte stepping into the path of Danilo, and that's where you end up seeing Koundé sticking tight on Jota. This is an example of Renato Sanchez dropping towards the halfway line, with Griezmann looking to step forward to apply pressure, Benzema dropping on Danilo, and Pogba shifting out to the path of Ronaldo who also dropped into an inside left position. You could see Conte tracking the movement of João Moutinho. If we look to another example, it's Renato Sanchez dropping to an inside left position to pick up the ball from Ruben Diaz, and you could see Benzema and Griezmann in between Danilo, but look how the play develops. Renato Sanchez ends up carrying the ball beyond the halfway line, but it's Tolisso stepping forward to apply pressure. You can see Koundé shifting across to Rafael Guerrero, Varane picking up Jota, and Pogba there for cover in case Renato Sanchez looked to bypass Tolisso. So as you can see, France were fairly organized without possession, and the only real threat that Portugal were looking to cause was down the right hand side, where Bernardo Silva was pulling out Hernandez, and he was using his ball retention to drag out the left back, and that's where you would see Semedo consistently looking to push forward beyond Mbappe to create overloads or combination plays down that flank to deliver balls into the path of Ronaldo and Jota, who were looking to break into the French penalty area. Meanwhile, when we focus on France, they encountered the same issues. They had 3v3 in that midfield zone, with Moutinho and Renato Sanchez initially stepping into the path of Conte and Pogba, and if Griezmann dropped off deeper, Danilo would be looking to shift into his path. That often did see Griezmann looking to push forward higher up the pitch to occupy a center back. And when we look out in those wider areas, it was clear that France were trying to get Mbappe in 1v1s with Semedo. But there were times where he was drifting centrally in that gap between Semedo and Pep. And that's where you would see Hernandez looking to push forward beyond Bernardo Silva. 
Whereas when you look on the right hand side, Tolisso was dropping off deeper to pull out Rafael Guerrero. And there were times where you ended up seeing Kunde stepping forward in beyond those two players to break in behind. But the key to France's success in this game was Pogba's ability to drop off into deeper positions away from the pressure of Renato Sanchez. And that's where he was able to get on the ball and he was looking to pick out runs for Mbappe looking to break on the outside of Semedo to get into 1v1s or looking to run across Semedo. If that wasn't the case, it was Mbappe occupying Semedo, Griezmann looking to drag out Danilo, and that would create a passing lane for Pogba to play balls in between the center backs for Benzema breaking in between them, or Mbappe looking to make that run across Semedo into that gap. The reason why France's right side was pivotal in that overall approach is because you have Tolisso pulling out Rafael Guerrero, and that would allow Koundé to peg back Jota. That creates space for Pogba to drop into, and there were even times where we saw Tolisso dropping away from Rafael Guerrero into that inside right position to get on the ball, and now that forces Jota to step out, and if he doesn't, it allows Tolisso the ability to play those long passes or to create 2v1s if Renato Sanchez does step out of position to apply pressure. Once again, it's Pogba on the ball in an inside right position in the Portugal half. Renato Sanchez doesn't step forward to apply pressure. You have Griezmann occupying Ruben Diaz, and you could see Mbappe looking to make a run into that center back gap across Pep. However, luckily for Portugal, when Pogba splits Ruben Diaz and Rafael Guerrero, his pass is slightly overhit, and it doesn't place Mbappe in a 1v1 with Rui Patricio. One of the better chances that France creates in that opening half, it's Pogba once again dropping into his own half, and you can see João Moutinho stepping into the path of Conte, Benzema dropping deeper to pull out Danilo, and Renato Sanchez is isn't stepping towards the ball carrier. That's where you end up seeing Mbappe beginning to make his run off Nelson Semedo. As the play develops, Renato Sanchez doesn't step into the path of Pogba, and now you can see Mbappe's run between Semedo and Pep, and that results in Pogba playing the ball beyond the Portuguese backline to put Mbappe in this position where he should be scoring, but he's denied by Rui Patricio. Frankly, in these situations, this is where you want João Moutinho to step into the path of Conte like you see here, or Renato Sanchez pushing higher up the pitch into the French half to close down Pogba in this example. Example. But even when you look to the build up to the dubious penalty that France was awarded, once again it's Mbappe dropping off the ball into Paul Pogba and look at the distance between Pogba and Renato Sanchez. That's where you see Mbappe running off Bernardo Silva to run across Nelson Semedo and Pogba ends up clipping the ball over Renato Sanchez's pressure and when the ball is going into the path of Mbappe he falls and that's how France were able to get back into the game. Meanwhile when we shift to the second half we did see a slight tactical change from France. Mbappe started the half on the right hand side and the reason why he did that was to occupy Rafael Guerrero. We witnessed Koundé pushing forward to peg back Jota and that's where you saw Griezmann occupying Ruben Diaz but at times he was shifting into the gap of Joao Paulinha to pull him out of position and then Pogba was dropping off in that inside right zone and with Ruben Diaz shifting across to help out Rafael Guerrero that creates a gap for Benzema. What you end up seeing now is that if Mbappe pulls out Rafael Guerrero and Renato Sanchez doesn't step into the path of Pogba now Pogba could play the ball across Renato Sanchez and into that gap between Ruben Diaz and Rafael Guerrero for Benzema to break free into right half space. And then in the build up to France's second goal, it's Pogba dropping towards the halfway line with no pressure applied to him. Look at what you see ahead of him. You have Koundé occupying Jota, Renato Sanchez now occupying Tolisso who dropped off deeper. You have Mbappe holding the touchline and pulling out Rafael Guerrero. And Joao Paulinho being occupied by Griezmann. That creates a gap for Pogba to play the ball beyond Renato Sanchez and Paulinho into that gap between Ruben Diaz and Rafael Guerrero who's pushed out to Mbappe. And that connects with Mbappe. Mbappe's run between the center backs and places him in this position where he's able to put France ahead. Portugal were able to claw back into the game by applying more pressure to Pogba when he looked to pick up the ball in those deeper positions. João Moutinho began to step further up the pitch to close him down and when he was substituted Ruben Neves did a better job of applying pressure to ensure that Pogba couldn't pick out those passes. This is a better example of Portugal's shape in that second half, with Joao Moutinho stepping towards Pogba, Renato Sanchez prepared to step towards Conte with Ronaldo in close proximity, and Joao Paulinho tracking the movement of Griezmann once again. In this example, you can see Ruben Neves stepping towards Pogba, dropping into an inside left position in his own half, and Joao Paulinho tracking the movement of Griezmann. And following that goal, we witnessed Ronaldo shifting out into that left channel to get himself into 1v1s with Koundé, and that ultimately helped Portugal win the penalty that equalized the game. 
But apart from that, we witnessed Rabio coming on to replace Lucas Dean, and that presented a weak point for Portugal to exploit. But it was often Rabio who was looking to peg back Bernardo Silva and then eventually Bruno Fernandes by pushing forward and carrying the ball into Portugal's half. So as you could see, a combination of Portugal's reluctance to step higher up the pitch to apply pressure to Paul Pogba, along with his passing range, was the key tactical theme of this game. But ultimately, poor defensive and mental lapses prevented the world champions from claiming all three points. Hi everybody, thanks for watching and subscribe here for your latest tactical analysis and daily commentary on the interview show. And if that wasn't enough, don't forget you could find more organic, unfiltered soccer slash football analysis on the interviews podcast, the best soccer slash football podcast in the world, available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and any Android apps on your Android devices.